Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 12th lecture of the course on sociological perspectives on modernity. Okay. Till now, we have covered two very important modules of this course, namely thematic preliminaries and sociological modernity. In another three lectures, we are going to cover ultra modernist perspective on modernity. I mean that is the structuralist case, I mean the structuralist interpretation of critical modernist paradigm in sociology. In this structuralist case, we are going to discuss the works of Levi Strauss and Louis Althusser. Somebody may pose this question as a, as a just as a prefatory remark, I mean somebody may pose this question that why Louis Althusser? He is a, he is a neo Marxist, uh, he belongs to the critical school. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, the Frankfurt School. Critical, uh, he belongs to the tradition of critical theory. Why, why Althusser has been, why has Althusser uh, been uh, clubbed under structuralism, structuralist interpretation of modernity? Precisely because his version, his account, I mean Althusser's account of modernity indicates structural Marxism. In this sense, even Althusser's account of modernity comes under structuralist interpretation of critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay. I mean structuralism like positivism okay, is no longer of uh, immediate int interest in its own right and and perhaps perhaps i will not be attempting too much to to provide anything like a comprehensive account of it where it is of interest is in a historical perspective in that it represents one of the most thoroughgoing versions of modernist thinking in sociology Okay. This is very important. Even if it is, it, it does not arouse any interest in, in, in uh, critical modernism, I mean structuralism does not arouse much interest in critical modernism. Okay. It is, it, it re, though it does not arouse any uh, uh, much, much interest in critical modernism, it represents one of the most thoroughgoing versions of modernist thinking in sociology and, and a series of ideas which remain current in for example, much neo Marxist as well as post structuralist thought. This is very important. We will we'll, as we move on, we will find that how, how they have significant implications not simply uh, for the debates in, in uh, neo Marxism, but also uh, post structuralism. I mean, in this way, structuralism imposes uh, itself uh, on us as a stage in social theory, 
whose effects are still wide, widely felt. Its period of dominance is now long uh, since past, but what remains is very often a social theory which has developed from structuralist approaches which has defined itself against them and which bears the marks of this encounter. Structuralism's claim to be considered a form to critical modernity, uh, however, is rather more tenuous. Okay. While much structuralism claims to be Marxist, okay, it very often appears more as an incorporation of Marxism into a rather more affirmative form of modernity. Okay. That is why I said it is very difficult to say whether Marx uh, or Engels they were uh, in favor of European modernity or not. No, it is not like that. They uh, at uh, I mean it is very difficult to say uh, whether they were absolutely in favor of uh, European modernity or they absolutely rejected European modernity. It is very difficult to say. But, but in the case of structuralism, I mean while much structuralism claims to be Marxist, okay, uh, very often it appears rather more as an incorporation of Marxism into a rather more affirmative form of modernity. Okay. I mean this is I mean I mean I mean this is particularly evident in the difficulties that 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 the structuralist thought uh, is confronted with in coming to terms with reflexivity okay as well as uh, its consequent explicit or implicit flirtation with positivism okay i'll be i'll be uh, i'll be mostly talking about uh, uh, if you look at it, I mean, I will be mostly talking about Levi Strauss and Althusser, uh, who are the best known strict, uh, I mean, who are best known strictly uh, uh, structuralist theorists and can certainly be said to be critical in terms of their political positions and their implications of some of their work, if not always in terms of reflexivity. Okay. I mean this structuralism intersects however, with the positivist and functionalist frameworks deriving from uh, August Comte and Emil Durkheim, which leads to Parsons uh, Parsonian structural functionalism. Okay. Uh, let me let me uh, give you. Uh, um, I mean, I mean, if you if you look at this, uh, uh, and how how we shall see that there are good reasons for this kind of convergence. Okay. Let me tell you what is, what is this. You know positivism. Oh, that supremacy of sciences over non sciences. That science is distinct from all areas of human activity or creativity because it possesses a method unique to it that there is only one method com, uh, common to all sciences irrespective of their subject matter. Then what is that method? You know that the method of science is the method of induction. Okay. That the hallmark of science lies in the fact that all scientific statements are systematically verifiable, that there must be a dichotomy between fact and value, that uh, observation always leads to theory, uh, but the converse is not true. In other words, uh, mm, theories are observation dependent whereas, uh, observations are theory independent. Uh, I mean there is, there, there, is, there, there is a unilateral relationship between observation and theory and so on. We have discussed these things. Okay. Then what is functionality? I mean complementarity and reciprocity of roles in the social division of labor. Social change has taken place only because of complementarity and reciprocity 
uh, of roles and statuses in the social division of labor. Okay? There is cooperation, there is no conflict, okay? in contradistinction with Marxism. Marxism always suggests that no, there is always a class of contradictions. Okay? There, is, there are always class conflicts, but, uh, but whereas, whereas functionalism always operates at the level of uh, complementarity and reciprocity of roles in the social division of labor. Okay? And, and, and such positivistic and, and functionalist uh, uh, explanations uh, or that we encounter in the works of Comte and uh, uh, August Comte and, uh, and, and uh, Emil Durkheim, not only in their works, which, but, but which has also led to uh, the, the Personian structural functionality. Okay. Suppose, Comte, Comte's uh, analysis, I mean positivistic analysis uh, e can, be, can be explained in ter terms of the law of stages, I mean the uh, how the society has traversed, now the society has traversed through three stages, namely the theological stage, the metaphysical stage and the positivistic or scientific stage. The theological stage explains change or social, economic, political, cultural, legal, ethical, institutional, ideological changes on the basis of supernatural forces. The, the metaphysical stage rejects the theological stage by explaining that, that, this, that any social change which has taken place is because of natural forces, I mean change is naturally mediated. Whereas, positivistic or, or uh, I mean in, in the metaphysical stage, why change is naturally, uh, naturally mediated? Because human beings always try to contemplate on nature, human beings always depend on nature. Whereas, whereas in the positivistic stage or scientific stage, what we have seen that no, human beings not only contemplate on nature, but also know how to master over nature, how to control nature. Okay? That is why we have discussed in, in the context of Marx, that by acting upon nature, human beings not only change nature, but also change the social relationships involved in it. Human, by acting upon nature, human beings not only change nature, but also change themselves. Okay, in the in the positivistic scheme. Okay, that's what Marx used in in the context of uh, 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 in the context of his materialist method, method of materialism. Okay. Okay. Now, when we look at this, I mean, in in, in materialism in the context of his ref, uh, reflections on the principles of dialectic. Okay, but but. But when and and when you when we look at this this uh, these positivistic and functionalist schools deriving from the works of uh, August County and 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 uh, Emil Durkheim, suppose uh, for for Durkheim, it is very important to to understand the rules of sociological method, okay? And that method again is a positivistic one that method is again the method of induction, okay? whether you look at his works on division of labor in society or mechanical solidarity or organic solidarity or suicide and so on. Okay? That method has always been a, the positivistic one, the method of induction. Okay? I mean when I talk about uh, mechanical solidarity, organic solidarity, what is solidarity? I mean solidarity is the assemblage of people in the performance of rituals. Okay? This is very important. Okay. I mean, and 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 such such complementarity and reciprocity of roles in the social division of labor that we generally encounter in in Parsons' structural functionality. Okay, 
I mean uh, uh, Talcott Parsons. Okay. I mean the entire Chicago school tradition if you look at this okay. in the in the 1940s, 50s, 60s especially 1950s and 1960s this, this functionalist school became very dominant in the American social sciences, American tradition of social sciences. Okay. I mean whether you look at uh, uh, person, person's work on the structure of social action or so systems theory and so on, I mean within systems theory again pattern variables and so on, you will, you will find that there is, there is a deep impression of, uh, uh, of, of uh, Comte, uh, Comtean and Durkheimian uh, positivistic and functionalist frame. I mean uh, and it is and 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 over time I mean uh, uh, in these in these 12th 13th and 14th lectures we will we'll find uh, we will we'll see uh, that there are good reasons for this kind of convergence that how structuralism intersects with not only positivism, but also functionalism. It is. It is. Um, it, it is worth doing this kind of exercise that that uh, that we must be engaged in such intersection of structuralism with positivism on the one hand and functionalism on the other. Okay. I will not be attempting to 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 um, give a remotely comprehensive account of uh, uh, either Levi Strauss or Louis Althusser, who are in any case opposed on a very wide variety of issues, no doubt about it. Okay. Rather what I am interested in, I am rather more interested in uh, here, uh, I am I'm, I'm, I'm more interested here uh, only with those elements of their arguments which bear on our themes in this course. What are those themes? What are the central themes of the critical modernist paradigm in sociology? Holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. Okay? I mean these four central pillars of modernity, these four uh, central philosophical and political foundations of modernity constitute, cons con constitute the critical uh, modernist paradigm in sociology. Incidentally, some of the best accounts of structuralism are critics rather than sympathetic expositions. I mean, I mean if, if somebody wants to uh, leave further and, and go into some, some more details even beyond this, this, these lectures okay, in this MOOC course okay, on, on sociological perspectives and modernity. Okay. You might be interested in, in, the, uh, uh, in the important critique of uh, Louis Althusser by E. P. Thompson um, in the poverty of theory, uh, which I will be discussing later in the course, because when I will be discussing deconstruction of modernity, I mean um, uh, well when I will be discussing those within deconstruction of modernity, I mean feminism, post colonialism uh, and, and, and post modernism. Okay. Now, it is now we can see, I, I mean I am I am trying to set the stage here to, to reflect on, on, um, on uh, or, or to reflect on those elements of their arguments, I mean huge arguments, I mean the arguments posed by uh, Levi Strauss and Louis Althusser, okay, which bear on our themes, uh, I mean bear on our central polit philosophical and political foundations of critical modernist paradigm in sociology in this course. 
Okay. Now, let us let us start with holism or totality. I mean we are trying to look at the works of uh, we are trying to examine the works of Levi Strauss and Louis Althusser egg through the lenses of these four central philosophical and political foundations of modernity. Okay. In holism or totality, we are trying to see. I mean, uh, we are we are looking at uh, basically um, four things. Four, um, yeah. Four, four, uh, three or three, three things, three to four things that that relationalism and the death of the subject or death of the author, difference, okay, functionalism okay, mm. and what kind of modernity in the context of structuralist interpretation. Okay. Then we will move on to uh, social movements, uh, rationality and reflexivity. And today, today in this lecture, we will try to capture okay, two very important components within uh, holism that is those are one relationalism and the death of the subject and difference will look at and in the next lecture we will discuss functionalism um, and what kind of modernity. Okay. When I when we look at I mean I mean when we look at holism or totality and how the works of Levi Strauss and, and Louis Althusser have contributed immensely to the debates on modernity through the lens of holism or totality. Okay. If, you, if you slightly recall, we have made a distinction in, 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 in the previous lectures between methodological individualist approaches, which take the individual as the starting point for social theory. and relational approaches which focus on the relations between individuals. When I say methodological individualist approaches, I refer to Max Weber. Weber treated individuals as primary, not the relationships between individuals. For, for Weber, individual is the starting point for any kind of society. And when I say relational approaches, they focus on the relations between individuals. I mean, for example, Marx. Marx always said that humanity can always, uh, human humanity has always been evaluated or examined in its social context, social circumstances, social conditions of labor production. Okay, it is very important. That is why, for example, uh, I mean, I mean, we have as we have seen in, in, in we have seen that in Marx, the, the relational emphasis derives from a conception of the individual as essentially social in nature. And that in Weber, what is relevant to the sociologist is action that is oriented towards the behavior of others. What kind of action? No. Value rational social action and more importantly goal rational social action alternatively known as instrumental rationality. Okay. Then what is the commonality that we can find in both uh, in the works of both Marx and Weber? In both cases, whether in the case of Marx or in the case of Weber, structure arises out of social interaction, geared particularly towards labor in Marx and towards meaning in Weber. Then I, 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 I reiterate this point that as, as we have seen that in Marx, the relational emphasis derives from a conception of the individual 
as essentially social in nature and that in Weber what is relevant to the sociologist is action that is oriented towards the behavior of others. In both cases in the case of Marx as well as in the case of Weber structure arises of social interaction. Okay. That in the case of Marx humanity is uh, situated, humanity is examined in, in its social context. Okay. That is why structure arises out of social interaction. What is relevant to the for, for, for Weber, what is relevant to the sociologist is action that is oriented towards the behavior of others. There also structure arises out of social interaction what, whether it is value rational social action or, or goal rational social action alternatively known as instrumental rationality. I mean in, 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 in the case of Marx such structure arises out of social interaction is geared particularly towards labor. Whereas, whereas in the case of Weber structure arises out of social action is geared particularly towards meaning. Okay. Okay. I mean I mean in in, in structuralism in, in structuralism, a relationship takes off and becomes fully independent. In other words, it is no longer human beings who relate with each other, but the fact of relationship which first creates the social and cultural individual out of an amorphous biological mass. If you, if you look at this, I mean in the case of both Marx and Weber okay, relationships are forged on the basis of individuals, collectives, groups, communities and so on. On the contrary, in structuralism relationship takes off and becomes fully independent it is no longer human beings, it is no longer individual, it is no longer community, it is no longer group, it is no longer collective who relate with each other. But the fact of relationship which first creates the social and cultural individual out of an amorphous biological mass. What does it refer to? What does it imply? Okay. I mean this is sometimes turned into a statement that, that we can only know the social, in other words the relational and that the individual or human nature are therefore, metaphysical concepts in the strict sense of the term that we cannot know them. Okay. Uh, let me uh, if I if I say that we can only know the the social not the individual not the self or human nature we can only know the social or the relational how am i how i am related to you how you are related to me how i am related to others how others are related to me okay only what what we can only know the social in other words the relational i mean that the individual or human nature are therefore, metaphysical concepts in the strict sense that we cannot know them. For example, we cannot know X in her or his unique individual internal experience even if we believe it exists. Why? Because all we have available to us is our social interaction with her or him what she says and what she does this ultra relationalism in other words leads to what is known as by the slogan of the death of the subject. Okay. I mean I mean let me give you an example everybody knows 
Sachin Tendulkar. Everybody knows Saurav Ganguly. Everybody knows Birat Kohli, Mahindra Singh Dhoni. Everybody knows Pele, Diego Maradona, Messi, Lata Mangeshkar, Saruk Khan, Amir Khan. Okay? Aja, 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 if I have to reflect on structuralist interpretation that actually I do not know Shahrukh Khan or Amir Khan or uh, Pele, Maradona, Messi, Sachin, Sourav, Birat Kohli. I do not know. I just know or Lata Mangeshkar. I just know the way Sachin bats, Sachin plays or Pele used to play or Maradona used to play or Messi plays. Lata Mangeshkar, the way Lata Mangeshkar sings, what they say and what they do are real, but I do not know, actually I do not know them. I know them through their performance, I know them through their action, I know them through what they do and what they say. Otherwise, I do not know that person as such, I, I do not know that individual as such. Okay? I mean for, for, for structuralists, the, the individual, the individual ceases to exist, the individual no longer exists. What exists that what that particular individual uh, tells us and what that particular individual does. This is, this is the, this is a structuralist construal of critical modernist paradigm in sociology. This is very important. Why I, uh, why, 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 why is it so? Precisely because the way we can, precisely because of the ways in which, uh, Structuralists argue that we can only know the social, in other words, the relational, the other than relational, the other than social cannot be known to us because I have never interacted with Lata Mangeshkar, I have never interacted with Sachin Ramesh Tendulkar, I have never interacted with uh, 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 Pele or Diego Maradona, I have never interacted with Kapil Dev Nikanj or Sunil Manohar Gavaskar. Okay? I mean this is very important to, to know that or I have never interacted with, with the Prime Minister of India for example. What I know, what I know of the Prime Minister of India or the President of India is through what they say and what they do. Okay? That is why in, in the structuralist case, we can know, we can only know the social, in other words the relational and that the individual or human nature are therefore, metaphysical concepts in the strict sense that, that we cannot know them. That is why I said for example, we cannot know Lata Mangeshkar in her unique individual internal experience even if we believe it exists because we all we have available to us all in all we have available to us is our social interaction with her what she says what she does how she sings and so on i mean this ultra relationalism okay in other words leads to what is known by the, the, the slogan of the death of the subject or the death of the author. Okay. What does it imply? It implies that either the individual literally does not exist because they are only created by social interaction and form simply an intersection between different social relations 
or the individual is methodologically unknowable because we can only know the social. This is this is interesting. I mean, if I say this 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 ultra relationalism leads to what is known by uh, I mean leads to the death of the subject or death of the author. It implies that either the individual literally does not exist, the individual ceases to exist, because the, the individuals are only created by social interaction. The individuals form simply an intersection between different social relations. It is the function. It is the the the. It is it, it is the functions which play, which assume greater significance than than the individual. It is the action which plays a more dominant role than the individual herself or himself. Okay. I mean, it it the the, the this ultra relationalism which leads to the death of the subject or death of the author okay, leads us into two directions. One, one may be um, the individual literally does not exist, because the individual is only created by social interaction and the individual simply forms an interaction between different social relations or second option is that or the individual is methodologically unknowable because we can what we can know we can know only the social in other words the relational okay i mean methodologically also it is not possible to know the individual what at most what to the greatest extent possible we can know we can just know what the individual says and or what the individual does. Okay. Then the argument that the individual literally does not exist and that, uh, that they are only the intersection of social relations or the bearers of social structure is argued very strongly by Louis Althusser who sees our belief that we are individuals to be a psychological illusion. Instead, Althusser argues, I mean the, I mean let me quote Althusser that um, the way he said, um, the category of the subject is the constitutive category of all ideology. That is why our illusory subjectivity generates ideology and ideology reproduces our illusions of subjectivity. It is very important. That is why if, if, if we have to go by what Althusser said, if we have to uh, decode what Althusser is trying to say, okay, he, that as structuralism argues that the individual does not exist, that the individuals are only the intersection of social relations of production or the or the bearers of social structure. Okay. I mean in through the lens of Althusser, who sees our belief that we are individuals to be a only psychological illusion, mental illusion the way he argues that the category of the subject is the constitutive category of all ideology. Okay. Whether it is uh, uh, individual or the social relations or relational human nature, whatever you say. Okay. The category of the subject is the constitutive category of all ideology. That is why this is our subjective position okay, 
what what Althusser suggests that that it is our subjective position which has created such psychological illusion. That is why our illusory subjectivity, that is why our illusory subjectivity produces ideology, produces uh, I mean our illusory subjectivity generates ideology and ideology reproduces our illusions of subjectivity. Okay. Now, let us come to the second important element mm. within holism or totality that is difference. Now, then we have discussed within holism or totality, we have discussed relationalism and the death of the subject. I mean we can only know the, the social in other words the relational and that the individual or human nature are therefore, metaphysical concepts in the strict sense that we cannot know them. Uh, I mean such such ultra relationalism leads to uh, the death of the subject. I mean either the individual literally does not exist because they are only created by social interaction and form simply an intersection between different social relations or the individual is methodologically unknowable because we can only know the social. The argument that the individual literally does not exist that they are only the intersection of social relations or the debates of social structure or, or the bearers of social structure is argued very strongly by Althusser who sees our belief that we are individuals to be a psychological illusion. Instead, he argues the category of the subject is the constitutive category of all our ideology. Our illusory subjectivity generates ideology and ideology reproduces our illusions of subjectivity. Okay. Now, in now in, 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 in while, while examining difference, all that we can know then or all that exists is the relational. If all that we can know about is relations, then we can think about the way in which those relations interact with one another in a very detached and even very formalistic approach. We can only try and categorize the different types of relation which are possible, which may be possible. <coughs> and Weber's four types of social action are a move in this direction. What are those? What were those four types of social action that we have already discussed? Traditional social action, affective or emotive social action, value rational social action, and goal rational social action. Goal rational social action is also known as instrumental rationality. Okay. Then these, these different types of relation which are possible. Okay. Further, we have also seen that despite uh, Weber's methodological individualism, I mean, I mean, um, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, despite uh, Weber's methodological individualism, the concept of instrumental rationality or goal oriented social action in particular has a tendency to become dominant in his thinking. Okay. That is why if you slightly recall we have discussed no, that how he, he thought of uh, uh, how he thought that no this um, uh, I mean um, uh, traditional social action and affective or emotive social action and are unreflective in nature and hence they do they, they they are meaningless and they do not contribute to meaningful social action. Rather value rational social action and goal rational social action they contribute to the domains of or spheres of meaningful social action. Okay. That is why instrumental rationality is very important. Uh, uh, instrumental rationality in particular has a tendency to become dominant in, in Weber's thinking. What, what, uh, what, what relationalism is 
likely to lead us to in other words is a, is a categorization of different types of relation on the one hand and different levels of relation. There are two things different types of relation, different forms of relations and at the same time different levels of relation within a particular relation you will find different levels of relation and an account of society in terms of the interrelation of these different relations. So, uh, I mean I mean this can this can clearly become very abstracted very rapidly mm, and 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 uh, see right mills the way we have we, we have adopted his method of the sociological imagination. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean his uh, Mills, C. Wright Mills discussion on the problems of grand theory is very relevant here. Okay? Uh, I mean, so relational approaches tend towards this kind of categorization, but they also tend to privilege intellectual consistency over empirical usefulness. In other words, in other words, because our description of different types of social relation is likely to be quite an abstracted one, if it is to be uh, much of much use in, 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 in telling us things that we do not already know, it will be a highly intellectual account. As we generate more of these concepts describing types and levels of relations, uh, we are going to uh, wish to make them as consistent as possible with each other for very valid uh, intellectual reasons. Uh, for, for equally valid reasons, we are likely to uh, wish to be able to generate all of them from as restricted a number of basic concepts as possible. In other words, uh, to generate typologies of possible variations and interrelations of particular types of relations. Okay. I mean these types and levels of relations, I mean types of relations as well as levels of relation, okay, there must be consistency and we must try, we must attempt to generate typologies of possible variations and interrelations of particular types of relations. Okay. The net effect of all this is that relational approaches have a tendency towards what we can properly describe as structuralist accounts that is in other words accounts which derive all of social reality from the operation and permutation of a limited number of basic concepts ideally this number can be reduced to only one okay okay i mean that is relationality okay because because this core concept from which our description of society is generated is a highly intellectual one. This is very likely to produce a form of philosophical ideology. What is that philosophical ideology? That is a, that is a theory, that is a method which treats the social world as generated from ideas and in this case from a single idea, because it can be reduced to ideally this can this number can be reduced to one. In this sense, this core concept, okay, which is very likely to produce a form of philosophical ideology, I mean it is a theory or a method which treats the social world as generated from ideas and in this case from a single idea. While there are dramatic differences in the content, the structure of our account of society is likely to be very similar whatever idea we start from. In some ways, Althusser account, uh, not of actual modes of production, but of the idea of modes of production and Levi-Strauss's mm, account of culture oriented around difference produce quite uh, similar way of thinking. Okay? I mean, I mean why wh what, what um, uh, uh, Althusser tried to uh, look at uh, that it is not the 
uh, actual mode of production that we talk about in the context of modernity, in the context of capitalism. Okay. But actually, we are talking about the idea of mode of production. We are not talking about modernity as such, but actual modernity, but we are talking about the idea of modernity. What we can envision modern, how we can envision modernity, how we can how we, we have tried to encapsulate capitalism. We do not know actual what, what actually capitalism is all about, okay? that idea. Okay? Okay. I mean that is why, well I mean, I mean the structure of our account of society is likely to be very similar whatever idea we start from. In, in, in some ways Althusser's account not of actual modes of production, but of the idea of modes of production and Levi Strauss's account of culture oriented, culture oriented to a difference produce quite similar ways of thinking. I mean to, 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 uh, to finish with this general account, uh, to finish with this general account it has to be said that Levi Strauss's account privileges this approach rather more visibly and it is worth saying, worth mentioning something briefly about what it is. Essentially, Levi Strauss performs two operations in his account of human culture. On the one hand, Levi Strauss employs a linguistic analogy to treat culture not as a, not just as a system of relations, but as a system of symbolic relations such as myths. And on the other hand, using the same linguistic analogy, Levi Strauss aims at a purely formal description of the various elements involved in particular myths, I mean particular system of symbolic relations, I mean such as myths. In other words, Levi Strauss sets out to describe structure, but not the content. What this, what this leads to uh, an argument that there is an objective meaning in human culture, uh, which is other than the subjective meaning. I mean, what this leads to is an argument that is an objective meaning in human culture, which is revealed by structure and which is other than the subjective meaning which is revealed by content. Okay? Objective meaning in human culture is revealed by structure, whereas subjective meaning in human culture is revealed by content. And what Levi Strauss was more interested in, Levi Strauss was interested in the, the objective meaning of human culture as, as revealed by structure. That is why um, what, what, uh, what, uh, what we just now discussed that using the same linguistic analogy, Levi Strauss aims at a purely formal description of the various elements involved in these, these systems of symbolic relations, namely myths. In other words, Levi Strauss sets out to describe structure but not the content. Okay. Since, however, this objective meaning cannot be straightforwardly shown to be present in a particular uh, uh, myth, once we bracket any question of the way people uh, say they understand it or the context that they tell it in, it has to be located, situated within the unconscious. In other words, from a description of uh, uh, from a from a description of social relations, we move to a description of the nature of the human psyche. Okay. Uh, to to complete this account, what what Levi Strauss claims to be the central feature of the human unconscious, a claim which he believes to be backed up by linguistics, is naturally enough identical with the concept that Levi Strauss uses to analyze the objective meaning of the form of myths. This distinction is that of difference or distinction. For Levi Strauss then the end of the intellectual journey is a uh, description of the social and in particular 
uh, uh, cultural world as a reflection of the supposed tendency of the human brain to, to divide things up. Okay. Now, what we have discussed in this lecture today, very quickly we will see, we, are, we started with uh, uh, the structuralist interpretation of modernity through the and how the works of Levi Strauss and Louis Althusser have contributed immensely uh, to the debates on modernity uh, and these four parameters, these four central philosophical and political foundations of modernity uh, uh, we try to examine through their works, through the works of Levi Strauss and Althusser. Now, we, 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 we uh, gave a prefatory remark about the structuralist interpretation, how uh, uh, structuralism, I mean there is an intersection between structuralism on the one hand and positivism and functionalism on the other, uh, which has led the works of, uh, which, which, uh, um, which is highlighted in the works of Ad, uh, August, August Comte and Emil Durkheim and which leads on to the works of uh, Parsonian structural functionalism. And in holism or totality, we have discussed relationalism and the death of the subject okay. and we have discussed uh, difference. Okay. In, the, in the next lecture, we are going to complete uh, uh, two more very important aspects uh, within holism or totality, okay. uh, I mean namely. Uh, functionalism and modernity. Okay. Thank you.